Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. Pay attention. Pay attention to the salvation message at the beginning. Get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. He shed his blood to forgive you for your past, present, and future sins. It's not a works. You can't earn yourself into heaven. It's not what you do. It's not how, how good of a person you are because one bad thought, one sin can send you to eternal hellfire. Jesus Christ is, was the Messiah, was God in flesh form, and died for us. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is the gospel where Jesus died, buried, and rose from the dead for you and for each and every one of us. Taking a look at Romans, take a look at 10.4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So the law, when Jesus came on the earth, was in play. There were all these Jewish laws that people couldn't keep. And they had to follow, keep the Sabbath, and keep the feast days, and keep all these ordinances, which man had failed greatly. Now, Christ came, he put an end to that. If we come down a little bit further, you shall see Romans 10, 9, and 10. Sort of a summary of how to be about how to be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. In other words, he died on the cross. He, he, his blood was shed for you. And he did raise from the dead. Because that's important. Because we're going to be raised the same way. Or raptured out the same way. And changed into our new bodies. That thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With a mouth, confession is made in salvation. And when you believe something truly, if I were to ask you about it, you could simply say what you believe, and you could t you could explain it, which means you believe what you're saying within your heart, that you think that's true, truly, assuming that, you know, that is what you believe with your heart, and you're not lying. So as long as you know that you believe what Jesus died for you on the cross and shed his blood for the remission and forgiveness of your sins, you should be able to say that. You should be able to repeat that. And why is that important? Because, hey, other people need to hear it, and you also need to be saved. Look at verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So you're not going to recite what you know, Jesus did for you if you don't believe. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So if you never heard about Jesus Christ, how could you believe? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So you can become what's called a preacher. You can become what's called a preacher. Romans 10, 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? So in other words, God sends us people out to give the gospel through videos like this and through people you know, doing it in other ways. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings and good things. Verse 16, 
but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. So what happens to in order to believe in verse 17? So then faith cometh by hearing. You hear, you hear the word of God. You hear, you hear the word of God. You hear the word of God. You hear the gospel. And it goes to say in verse 17, hearing by the word of God. But verse 18, but I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the earth. So we know that the gospel will be delivered to the entire earth. And then those that, that give the gospel come in peace. They, get, they bring glad tidings and good, of good things. And so hopefully today you're hearing this message. If you're not saved, today's the day to believe with your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ did die for you in remission of your sins. Also, all you have to do is to truly believe that with your whole heart and your whole being to be saved. God bless. Have a great day.